How's it going? Thought I'd do a little bit of an update on the aquaculture or the fish farm setup behind me here. Um, it's been going great. We have had one loss though. A couple of days after the fish went in, uh, we found, once I was cleaning out the slows or the solid, lift, solid lifting outlets, I found a dead silver perch stuck to the bottom of them. So what I think has happened is we had one or two that looked very sluggish when they went in on day one. And I have a feeling what's happened is, yeah, he's pretty much all passed and the suction of the, um, the solid lifting outlet has just stuck into the bottom there. Um, I'm not too worried because all the rest have been feeding really well and we've had no other losses. Um, there's, all the jades are still there, it's just that one silver. Uh, the system cycling. The system has been cycling fantastically. Um, we've had ammonia up to around about 4 parts per million or 4 milligrams per litre. And same with the nitrite. And we've had no, like I said before, no deaths other than that one. Um, the reason why we're able to cycle with the fish in there at the moment is because we have a low pH. It's sitting around about 6.5 or 6.6 .6 today. And also too, we have cooler water temperatures at the moment. Uh, at the moment, it's around about midday here. Um, in subtropics and in second or third day of winter and we've got a water temperature of 20 degrees so those two factors together the low um, pH and the low water temperature basically means that the ammonia doesn't pose a problem to the fish so there's a chart in the um, description box below you can check that out um, it gives you different ranges and all that sort of thing for your ammonia toxicity um, the system is still salted. We have taken one load of water out when I did a bit of a um, clean up of the system, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but there is still pretty much all 0.5 parts per thousand of pure sea salt in there. And what that's doing is protecting the fish against brown blood disease with the high nitrite levels. So that's how we're guarding against the high nitrite levels. But overall, I've been really happy. Um, the fish are feeding. The fish are getting pretty much all round about um, well, the jades, their body weight, so their body weight, they're probably getting around about um, five to six grams worth of feed a day in the system, and pretty much all the same with the silvers. The jades are a little bit bigger, so we're feeding them at around about 3% uh, their body weight, and the silvers are a little bit smaller, so we're feeding them around about 5% of their total body weight at the moment. So um, the jades have noticeably put on size, and they're really hitting the one mil pellets, floating pellets. Uh, the silvers, they're really hitting the feed well too. Uh, there's a sinking, um, posing a few issues that I'll show you in a minute but other than that yeah really happy with the way the fish are going. Um, pumps as you can hear it's running pretty silent at the moment that's normally not the case. Uh, the Venturis weren't working with the pump that I've got. I've got a 10,000 litre an hour eco-friendly jobby and it really just isn't um, with those two Venturis on the fish tanks and the one on the biofilter it just isn't pushing the volume of water through the tanks that I'd like. I'm only, I'm actually getting less than um, one turnaround of tank volume per hour. It was around about the 900 litre mark I've worked out with a bucket of water in the sump tank uh, to measure it. Um, so I pretty much will just pull the Venturis out, letting, letting the water just jet straight onto the surface of the fish tank, giving me lots of movement in the water and the surface of the water actually forcing bubbles down into the system. So I'm happy with the aeration I'm getting now. And also the water turnaround would have to be well over two to three times an hour now um, in those fish tanks. The only problem with that is it's rather loud. Um, I've actually got the pipes in there now so it's not going to um, disturb the clip too much. Otherwise, you know, it gets a bit hard to hear me speak. So, yeah, um, I, I am looking at getting another pump that can run those Venturis though because I, I really don't want to annoy the neighbours too much with that water just free falling into the tank. So. Um, what else has gone on? Um, I turned the moving bed biofilter into a trickle filter the other week. Uh, we had a whole heap of suspended solids in the system. I basically think it was a bit of an algal issue, um, suspended algae in the system. So I ran the trickle filter, uh, the biofilter as a trickle filter, and it polished the water up really, really well. Uh, what I think is happening is the, the lids are just a little bit ajar, and because of the sun is coming straight into the front of this now, uh, the sunlight's coming through and causing a bit of an algal bloom in the water with the lids, yeah, just ajar a bit. So what my father and I have done is we've put a run of um, shade cloth just over the front of the hoop house truck, structure and that's just guarding against that morning sun a little bit haven't had any issues since then the water's still nice and clean and yeah really happy with the way the trickle filter worked out um yeah i'll give you a bit of a look at the fish just to give you an idea about the noise this is the jade perch tank so that's what it normally sounds like so there's that and the silver perch tank going at the same time 
So not only is it loud for shooting clips, but also too it would get to the neighbour's nerves a bit. So I really don't want to put them offside at all. Um, I could throw a fish over the fence, but yeah, I, I think they prefer a bit of peace and quiet as well. So as you can see, the jays have put on a bit of side and they're also feeding very, very well. I don't like the camera being at the side of the tank though. That's one thing they're not too happy about. But yeah, they're polishing off their feed. Like I said before, they're getting about five grams which measures out to be just the covering of the base of this lid here. So, more than happy with the way they're going. Just over here at the Silver Perch tank, we're having a few flow rate issues with this tank. The reason why is because we are having a bit of a solid, oh, if I can just get the camera into position, we're having a bit of a solids build up. And what that is, is because the, the Silver Perch food is powderized, or it's a little bit more granulated than the um, one mil pellets, it's tending to um, congregate on the floor of the um, tank here and it's a bit hard for you to see but it's actually building up on the bottom of the slope. So I'll just set up, there's a lot of muck just sitting there. Um, you can see the drag marks on the bottom of the tank. That's from me dragging along one of the little fish nets we've got, the very fine mesh and picking up the solids every two or three days just trying to get as many of them out as I can. Um, I'll just pull out the slow and I'll show you why we're having the issue. This is the end of the slow pipe from the silver perch tank. And as you can see, there's a bit of this veggie netting over a foot valve screen that's screwed into the bottom of the pipe. The reason is because the fish are that small, they would be able to fit up the end cap that I've got drilled out that will be the eventual base for this slow pipe. So I put this netting on here and I use the um, foot valve screen because there's a lot more openings. Uh, my rationale being that if it does clog up like this, um, there's a lot more chance for water to make it through some of the other holes than if I just had an end cap with this veggie net over the top of it. Um, if the holes block up in that, the tank could just overflow and could end up with fingerlings on the ground. So, so I'm coming down here every second day pretty much while well, I'm just hosing this out, cleaning it up and the flow rates return. But like I said, the solids collecting on the base are a bit of an issue. As soon as the end cap goes on here and the proper um, slow goes in with the slits cut in the size, once the fish get a little bit bigger, I don't think we're going to have the solids accumulate like we are at the moment. So it's just one of those things, unfortunately. So there you go. That, that just gives you an idea of how much it was blocked up for it to back up the tank the way it has. So yeah, I'll just pop this back in and let the fish get back to it. And that's what the water level normally is like on that inlet pipe. I might actually just give you a bit of a look at the media in the biofilter as well. So just to give you a bit of a um, comparison, this is some nice brand new media. And this is media that has started to be colonized by the nitrous ammonas and the nitrobacter families of bacteria. These are the guys who do all the um, exchange of ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. Uh, as you can see, some of the wheels are a little bit brown, and this stuff is pretty much all white. And these are the wheels we use to help cycle this system. These had bacteria that we imported in, and as you can see, very well colonized. So, very happy with the way it's gone. Um, put some new ones in there. There's about 85 litres of biomedia in here at the moment, and that's actually a lot more than we need to bring to harvest size the probably around about 70 or so fish that'll end up being in here once the others are taken out from my parents aquaponic setup and our own aquaponic setup so yeah pretty groovy looking stuff really when you think there's billions of bacteria just down in there doing the hard work for us so there you go there's a bit of a look at how the fish farm's going um, i'm really chuffed with the way it's traveling along the fingerlings are growing a um, few little hurdles to cross like the um, the solids lifting outlet getting clogged up, but as soon as the fish outgrow the size of the uh, holes in the slow pipe, um, yeah, I'll be able to take that netting off, sweep the floor, and those solids will just get sucked through to the filter. Really happy with the way um, it's cycling as well. Um, really stoked with that. Two weeks and we're starting to get the downward movement in ammonia, so that can only be a good thing. Happy with the way the trickle filter worked. A lot of people were concerned that we didn't have enough fine solid filtration on the system. Um, being able to take out that algal, uh, suspended algae in there um, worked a treat for me. So for the time being, I'm pretty happy with that. It's starting to rain. Um, also too, a couple of people have asked why um, PMs as well as on the bottom comment sections have asked me why I'm not filtering the water through grow beds and treating it as an aquaponic system. 
basically I want to you know have a crack at this to show you guys um, especially the guys I spoke to a fair while ago um, who want, have only got a small area in a garage or a basement they don't want to grow plants they just want to grow some table fish mainly in America tilapia that sort of thing fish and worms check out his channel link in the description and probably up there as well um, check out his channel I mean this guy has got an awesome aquaculture setup I mean he's, he's the guy who I saw to begin with with the aquaculture then Paul put on the do and yeah I was just sold so yeah that, that's pretty much for why I want to show other people you can do it I want to do it myself prove a point to myself I suppose so I've done it so pretty much we'll leave it there um, if you do have any comments questions or suggestions leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you uh, also too want to mention we've got a Facebook page and also started up an Instagram page so uh, it would be easier for me to post to Facebook so check them out if you're into Facebook and Instagramming sort of stuff and I will leave it there so I hope everyone's well and happy and I hope you all have a fantastic week cheers guys just to let you know these are the noisy little blighters in the background of the clips these are the rainbow lorikeets and I love feasting on this bottle brush next to the house, I think it's called a calistamon. So as you can see there's a few flowers and we get loads of them in there at times. So they're the noisy little buggers you can hear.